Hey everybody, it's Jeremy here. Uh, I've owed you guys this video for a long time, um, which is the part two of the Maxpedition Remora and how uh, I've had it set up uh, for over a decade now. Uh, and I still use it. Um, I still think it's the greatest, fastest bag uh, that's really lightweight. Um, it's easy grab and go bag and um, nothing's really changed I think I figured this out for myself it could be different for you but for myself uh, as you saw in the first video uh, not very well I admit um, I wanted to show you a lot more dry practice techniques for it and uh, so this part two video hopefully is going to cover a lot more and give you some more details a lot of people have asked about um, explicit visual images of like the magnet and how I've got a velcroed in there we're gonna cover all that okay uh, so with that the remora great little bag it's exactly as you saw it a couple years ago <clears throat> in that first video and I don't wear it any differently um, I'm wearing a white shirt for contrasting uh, color so you hopefully you can see it a little bit better but um, I guess throughout my habits I have found that if I were to be wearing it I generally wear a dark color so it doesn't stand out as much I mean a black or a brown t-shirt uh, tend I think tend to makes this little bag disappear and uh, I think it does a, again a great job um, Nothing's changed. It still carries a ventilated operator kit from Tactical Response. Uh, there's a lot of great kits out there. I still think that one's the best one for the money. But uh, and uh, you know your your firearm. So I've got a trauma inducing kit and a trauma reducing kit, which I think are two things you should have on you at all times. Uh, again, your opportunity to help someone with your medical skills uh, is far going to outweigh. Uh, your opportunity to uh, help them stopping in criminally initiated violent encounter but with that let's let's jump into it so in the first video I talked about like hey this is how you draw it and I think I did it one time for you so let's do that first um, and you can skip around in the video as, as you want but um, so here we are walking around um, we'll go over it slow you've generally got to put one hand on the bag no matter where it is but the further you get back I tend to like to grab this big piece here it's got a lot of real estate to uh, I, you'll see me jump up and down that kind of I feel like that keeps me from cheating um, when I'm doing my dry practice it resets the back you know kind of in a natural position I, you, you don't you won't see me go oh, it's got to perfectly be in this spot um, I'm not going to do that. So you'll see me kind of let it shake my shoulders out. So again, we that first step of grabbing wherever you can on the bag. The second step, as I talked about crossing my arms, my thumb is out. Um, and that's kind of natural. I don't know that I actively think about trying to get it in or outside of the bag. I think outside is probably easier. It gives your hand kind of a stop and you uncross your arm. So I'm actively going two different directions. So my, my left arm is going back to the left. My right arm is going back to the right. And then I fold the pistol forward as it reaches a three position. And then I push the gun out to acquire that sight picture and, uh, begin to uh, go to work that I have to do for the reason I had to bring it out so let's go over that more than a few times okay resetting like any any firearm keeping the finger off the trigger you may have heard the magnet click onto the pistol and to talk about that as a that's a Glock 19 not much has changed I still think um, it's a really perfect size gun for the bag though I mean I have certainly carried uh, a shield in it um, 
and for a long a long time I would take my 17 out of my you know four o'clock position holster and put it in this bag if I was wearing sweats or I'd come from a workout which generally was you know at twice a day sometimes um, not anymore but um, and run to the store run to where I had to go without like oh, I gotta put all my rig on um, you know ten years ago I would have begged you man you got to put that rig on you got to do this and carry the same way every day and um, I think you can overcome that with considerable amount of practice can you get to master you know this one technique and you'll be the fastest at the technique absolutely from that position absolutely um, but I've grown up you know I turned 40 this year and um, it's taught me a lot about um, real life real life being a dad you know, husband there's real life we have different carry modes and carry styles and having this in your bag of tricks that you've practiced through discipline can uh, make the opportunity for you to be armed much higher than it might not have been before and I think I've, I've come to terms with um, we got to get people carrying and we have to get them practiced and both those things are so, they're just hand in hand. So let's, let's, let's watch this a couple more times. Let's watch the, the, the draw. So this is me standing. In the first video I talked about like, oh, I'm going to sit down in a chair. I'm going to sit down in my vehicle. This easily just comes to the fore and I can drive around. And uh, this comes from driving an all-wheel drive turbo race car, uh, which I no longer own. But my point is, is that uh, from uh, driving a race car with bucket seats, aggressive bucket seats, to a 30-year-old truck with a bench seat. Uh, this is flat enough that um, you should find, again with practice, this isn't going to uh, you know, disturb your driving position. If, if anything, drawing from this in a seated position is really advantageous. You need both hands to do it. Yeah, you do. Can you practice enough? Practice enough that you can get away without doing that? Very likely. You tell me. Um, so, this starting position, which is the worst position, this is this is the farthest thing you have to do to get to your gun, is wearing it this way. You got this here, 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 here. You won't see me sidestepping today. Maybe checking my uh, sides, my surroundings. Please don't, please don't judge me too aggressively. Uh, I'm limited in a narrow, narrow foveal cone, uh, so for camera's sake. But uh, if this is all one take, it may be all one take. But uh, we'll keep going. So again, uh, where I'm walking, stuff gets tight. Spreading it with my fingers. Hear that slam of the magnet. And I've pushed it in there. The difference between the first video and this video, uh, if you might notice immediately, I've got an uh, RMR on top of this Glock 19. Um, that's the only difference. Does it make does it make size difference? Yeah, a little bit. But it still fits in there. It still slides in there. So it's not the, it's not a big deal. It just makes reholstering it uh, a little bit more tricky. So I'm just a little bit more cognitive of just where the sight is, oh, mainly so it doesn't just come to rest on this lip. That's all it is. So you'll see me open it up with my fingers, and I wasn't doing that a few years ago in the old video. Uh, from the side. Hopefully that's all in frame.
on this side. Might be a little bit more telling. Somewhere in the frame there. Man, R2. Might as well get some trigger squeezes off, okay? Since I'm looking at my R2. Uh, It's not coming out. So here's the pistol. see where the pistol is rubbing some of the plastic of the magnet off. I don't know if that'll stick. Never tried it before. But it's it could almost stick. There it's bottomed out. It's in there guys. And I, I think for other bags as well, um, <clears throat> I think a magnet's a great way to go. Uh, just, you know, if you're sticking your phone in there, which I, I for the longest time, did. Um, you know, this will this will go in there. My phone will go in there, which, again, is pretty convenient when I'm grabbing the bag. I can throw my wallet in there, my phone in there, bam. This is my grab bag. I go. Um, the, the, this, this is an iPhone, the large one, so it, it's a little bit more annoying to get it in and out of that front pocket, though it does fit. Um, neither here nor there, but. Um, stuff all right we'll make a jump here and uh, get you a little bit close up on what the magnet looks like all right so uh, let's get some close-ups to uh, what the magnet looks like situated in the bag uh, I know the view of the camera is a little farther away this time but I hope to hold it up and uh, hopefully clear some things up through a bunch of questions I had on the first video so Here's our bang. Here's the pistol in the bag. Just as you saw me wear it, uh, it's not any different. Um, let's go ahead and pull this thing out. Kind of weird to do when you're not wearing it. So, um, let's dig down in there and get this bad boy out. It's been in there for a while, guys. <laughs> All right. So that is the magnet. And this is just a piece of Velcro 
on the back. You know, that they sell for carpets. Um, you can get this at a bunch of different hobby shops. Uh, you can get it at Millspec Monkey. Good dude. It has holes in it, in th this particular magnet. I, this is so old, guys. I, I haven't found it anywhere. If I, if I, I'll look again. Uh, I think in the first video, I was looking for maybe a link to some comparable magnets, uh, if not the same one. Because the holes that the guy designed this gun, because it's it's tailored for, you know, four firearms, you can mount it, uh, you know, to uh, a desk or, uh, you know, a hard surface, like in your vehicle. Um, it's pretty convenient. But I, <laughs> the Velcro is so nice, I don't, I don't know if I'd do anything else, even on the underside of a desk, because uh, if you have these, uh, you might have just a few of them, and being able to move them might be convenient. Uh, through the velcro but um so that's all it is it and the pistol fits onto there you know well it's on the right side here you know lengthwise so when i'm drawing the pistol it's sliding off because you pull it i mean <laughs> ow um you don't want to. You, you wouldn't be able to pull it straight off. Sliding it off, however, is incredibly smooth and easy. So, I mean, e easier considerably, but uh, not necessarily super easy. But <clears throat> that's what the magnet looks like. So down in the compartment, again, I talked about in the first video, the Velcro is on the wrong side. So when I stick my hand in. If I were to take some kind of holster and try to affix it inside the bag, I try to fix it in there, your fingers end up hitting the holster attachment between the holster and the Velcro, which would keep it in there, you know. You know, for example, I, you know, I might undo these screws put a piece of velcro around this thing and I could mount this in here and that'd be a pretty pretty solid rig yet if I stick my hands in there to draw the, to draw the pistol my fingers would hit the velcro that hold this in that's why I think it's such a great option having a magnet it leaves everything on that side open and it's the attachment is at the top where your fingers are not so this goes all the way in. Gosh, I don't even know exactly where I had it. But I do know that I want it at the top to just hold the slide. And again, it's about where I want it. Probably move it inboard by maybe a sixteenth of an inch. And it's a lot easier that second time. Yep. All right. Get it situated down there. Alright, that's brought the pistol a little bit over. So, going that way. A little bit more centered up. That makes it a little easier on my sight. Uh, so, uh, my glass. Oh yeah, shoot man, maybe I should have done that a long time ago. So, uh, gosh. And that's about it. Again, there's not much in it. The Vought kit's not very large. Uh, H bandage is the biggest thing in it. Um, mags in the front, like I showed you in the first video. So I'm trying not to, you know, rehash the same thing I already talked about or showed you. But um, all the dry practice works the same way. So that's what the magnet inside the bag looks like. 
Uh, so that was it for video two. Um, the Maxpedition Remora draw stroke. It's, uh, I think it's critically important to vary some of your techniques if that's what it takes to get you to carry your pistol every day. Um, there, are, there are people who have guns. They have them. Uh, there are people who actively collect them. Pretty to look at. Some who are excited about it enough to study some of the martial aspects of it. They have this enthusiasm, this, this, these gun enthusiasts. And then there are fighters. You've got to take that step and train and have the discipline to practice it and train and be a fighter bearing your firearm outside not just wearing it but bearing it as you walk about your life if you're willing to take that step or have taken that step uh, congratulations you're not any in, those who don't are not any inferior to any of us who choose to take these steps but there's a level of seriousness that you need to take this when considering carrying it every day. And if this has been helpful for you to take that step, I'm, I'm grateful. Someone did it for me and set the example that I'm grateful for still today. Thanks a lot, everybody. See you next time.